Yeah. I'll toss this to you like a football. Can you catch it? Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. This little sucker's a chunk. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the foundry. Thought it'd be cool to do a video on one of my old work trucks I'm putting back into service. Um, it's a 1995 Ford F-250 extended cab, long bed, four wheel drive. It's got a 460, 7.5 liter gas burner. And we're gonna go over it and just kind of see what it needs. And here it is. Call this truck Brute. Every good truck needs a name. Um, <laughs> and the less you drive it, the more elaborate the name needs to be. So I don't drive this one very much. The most obvious reason is because, well, it's 20 some odd years old. It's a gas guzzler. I'm talking single digit gas mileage. And I know what you're thinking. So why am I putting it back in service with these crazy gas prices? Well, it's temporary. I've got a diesel. Uh, it's also an OBS Ford F-350. Uh, it's got a utility bed and all that. That's going to be the designated oil field truck, but I've got it in for paint. And as soon as it's done, it'll be the, the truck I use. In the meantime, I got to do something. So I'm going to be pulling a heavy trailer, uh, sometimes tandem trailers, and I need something that can do that. I need four wheel drive, uh, preferably. It, you know, four-wheel drive is not mandatory, but when you're pulling heavy trailers, it really helps in certain situations. So I'm going to put this truck back in service because I have it, and it's uh, pretty much ready to go. I'm going to put some tool boxes on it. I've got some tools i got to carry. We're going to do uh, side boxes, a cross box. I've also got an auxiliary water tank under the bed for just washing up. Uh, it's a nasty job. And... It needs, uh, you know, just checking out under the hood, general maintenance type stuff. And I thought it'd be kind of cool. These trucks are, well, you know, today they're kind of sought after. This, this one, <laughs> this one is well used, so it's it's not a, a diamond. But uh, yeah, it's got 380,000 miles on it. And there's pros and cons to putting old trucks in service. And I may do something on that later. There's a, you know, I've put pen to paper and I've determined that this is probably my best bet right now, even with the high gas prices. I'm not gonna be driving it, but maybe 20 or 30 miles a day. And, uh, well, hopefully not more than that. Depends on where the locations are. But anyway, let's check it out and see what it needs. So uh, I'll go over what I know that it needs and we'll, get, we'll just start from there. Um, you may have heard it when I pulled in, it's making a whining noise. And when you first hear it, you might think it's the power steering part, but it's actually not. That's what I thought too. So I put a new pump on it. Then I learned what it really was and I'll show you. Get this thing. Yeah. It's this right here. And what that is is an AC compressor delete pulley. Uh, before I got it, apparently the, air, the uh, AC compressor had locked up, so they just put this delete pulley on there. And um, I've inspected it, the bearing's good but it's just kind of a cheap piece of crap. The shaft that the bearing rides on is actually cast aluminum. It's not even a, a real shaft. And so it doesn't fit on there tight. It allows that pulley to walk a little bit. And I think it's worn some pretty sharp grooves in it. And uh, so I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna get rid of all this and put an AC compressor back on it. I do intend to fix the air conditioner at some point, uh, especially if I need to use it during the summer summers here are just brutal we're in the the armpit of the south i mean 100 percent humidity 100 degree days 
and I'm gonna need some air conditioning. But in the meantime, I've got an old compressor. The clutch uh, assembly on it's good. It, it turns free and everything. So I'm just gonna stick that on there and just eliminate this crap altogether. That's one thing I'm gonna do. Uh, I already mentioned the toolboxes that are going on it. I've got some uh, Rawson high quality boxes. I'm gonna put a cross box and side boxes and uh, I'm gonna have to adjust the rear brakes. Uh, whatever holds, uh, there's a little, I think it's a cable operated little mechanism on the rear brake adjuster. For whatever reason, those aren't working. It's allowing the brakes to back off. And when that happens, you're, you don't have a good pedal at all and your proportioning from rear brake to front brake goes to crap. I was pulling a tractor with it and it started raining. I come up to a stop sign and realize I only had front brakes. Front brakes locked up. Of course, then you can't steer. So I'm pumping the brakes to give me the ability to steer, but I had uh, absolutely no way to stop. And so I blew smooth through that intersection. And fortunately, there wasn't any other cars coming. Uh, one other good thing about this truck is it's got lights all over it. I got lights on the headache rack uh, to light up cargo, light up behind the truck. I got uh, lights on the side of the headache rack and there are, uh, the, the side lights are on their own switches so I can light the left or, or right side. I've got lights in the rear bumper. I've got a spotlight up here and I've got a light bar up front because the headlights on these trucks they're just not great and when I'm out you know, off-road where I'm going to be working. I want to be able to see. Uh, I don't have to worry about blinding people or anything like that. So that light bar comes in handy. And so, uh, yeah, let's get started. So I thought I had an AC compressor and I did, but the pulley on it is crap. So I'm coming to my buddy's shop uh, next door and I'm going to see what he's got for us. What is he dealing with in here? I wish my shop had one of those. All right, so my buddy's giving me a AC compressor to use. Uh, the challenge is it's up there, so. If I toss this to you like a football, can you catch it? Yeah. <laughs> Shoot. This little sucker's a chunk. I'll just come up behind your hand and ask him. I climb up real quick. Yeah. Alright. Don't let it fall and hit you in the face. <laughs> Covered up the ports. Yeah. That's a surprise. All right. Yeah, I'm going to have to block them ports with something so it doesn't get crap in it. All right, I went ahead and removed the air hoses to get them out of the way. Uh, next, I'm going to pull the belt and then zip this bracket off.
easy enough. And you can see this pulley, I don't know if you can see or not, but pulley's loose on this deal. There's little dowels under here, so this thing should set up here without falling to the dang floor. Or it may not fit at all. I think it will. Yeah, let me grab a little persuasion instrument. All right, let's see if we can't persuade it. That's gonna pan out. I don't think that's gonna work. So my old compressor didn't have these dowels. It just used the bolts to align it. So I've got to pull these out. They won't fit in the bracket. Before I tighten that down all the way, let's see here. Boy, these hoses ain't been used in a long time. I can't see back there very well. I think that goes just like so. I got a bolt floating around here somewhere. Here it is. Yeah, this truck's traditionally been my wintertime truck. I use it as my woods truck, uh, hunting, fishing, that sort of thing. I mean, I, I've used it for work. That's why it's got the decals on it. Uh, I gotta have decals on my truck to get in some of the plants around here. And uh, I have made deliveries and stuff with it. Uh, so, but now I'm using it for a new business venture until I get my other truck going. Mm. Get these started good. I'll just ease on it a little bit. Oop, that's not the right. take much. Alright. Let's get the belt back on her. Yeah, I don't know what this compressor came off of, but and I'm hoping the pulley diameter is right. I didn't actually measure it. That's just the way I rolled. Well, that took a wider belt, didn't it? Yeah, you can see whatever belt was on this thing was two grooves wider. But as long as it's lined up with the power steering pulley down there, and it appears to be on the, on the outer grooves, um, I think it'll be good. So I'm going to button the air hoses back up. The belt seems to have good tension. So hopefully our pulley diameter is correct. It won't go to squealing on us. Put them hoses back on, crank it up, see what it sounds like.
is more quiet, but I believe this belt is too loose because I've got no power steering, which leads me to believe this, this pulley is smaller diameter than that delete pulley that was on here. So I'm going to compare this pulley to the compressor I've got uh, that sure enough came off a 460 just like this and see if uh, there's a difference in pulley size or if somebody when they put the delete system on there uh, went with a bigger belt because I can always go with a uh, shorter belt and it'll take up that slack. So as you can see, I think you can see, um, the 460, this must have come off a small block, the 460's got a much bigger diameter pulley. So, uh, this clutch and, and pulley are junk, I can't use them. So I'm going to go look and see if he's got another compressor with a bigger pulley. Uh, if not, I'm probably just going to go with a shorter belt. And I'll save this belt for when I fix because this belt is fairly, I think it's like, I don't think it's got a thousand miles on it, it's fairly new. And I'll save it for when I do my, uh, when I fix the AC proper. So here's where we're at on the deal. Um, he didn't have another compressor, didn't have a 460 compressor. And so uh, I opted to try a shorter belt and I went to O'Reilly and asked for one size smaller than the factory size. And they told me they came in one inch increments. Well, I feel like one inch may, <laughs> may be a little bit too much. I've done something similar to this before and it seemed like an inch made, you know, a lot of difference. But I don't know. Hopefully it'll work. I'm going to try it. Uh, by the way, you have to pull the, on 460, it's got two belts, the alternator side and the power steering compressor side. You've got to pull that belt off first, which I've already done. I'm going to stick this one on here. Let's see if it works. If it doesn't, I'm going to try another parts store that may have a different brand of belt. He didn't even ask me what brand I wanted. He just pulled a, appears to be the house brand or whatever. Which this is temporary, so that doesn't really make me any difference what brand it is. All right. So I've determined that my belt runs true if I... You know, this, this compressor actually is probably a diesel compressor. The reason I think that's how wide the belt is compared to mine. So I found that it runs true if I run it right in the center. I'll get it on the crankshaft and the water pump. quite a bit shorter. Let's see if I have enough enough travel in the tensioner to make it work. Ooh, my stool. These new belts are all stiff. It's hard to keep them on the pulleys long enough to I think that's on there. That's not bad. Oh yeah, that's that's not bad. And I think I've uh, I don't think I'm topped out on my tensioner. So yeah, I'm gonna crank it up and see if that solved the issue. Yeah, these Ford power steering pumps are always loud, more so with the hood up, but man, that is a lot quieter 
than it was with that wore out pulley. And it's tracking good. It's tracking in the water pump pulley straight. So I'm going to call that good. I'm going to put this belt back together and then we'll be ready for the next phase of the little project here. So I'm going to try to bring some value to this video beyond the entertainment of just watching some long-haired guy you've never seen before fumbling around with parts. What is an AC compressor delete kit and should you get one if your AC compressor clutch locks up? So what it is, is exactly what the name suggests it is. It deletes the AC compressor. You take the compressor off, you mount this kit in its place, you can reuse your existing belt, and everything is the way it was. Should you get one? Well, the answer to that is it depends. These kits range in price from $30 to $70-ish. And I couldn't really tell the difference between the $30 one and the $70 one. But I do know that a compressor clutch kit is around 70 or 80 bucks. So my recommendation is to get the clutch kit. And here's why. These kits are kind of cheesy. The pulley rides on this, and this is not a machine shaft to fit this bearing. This is cast aluminum just like the rest of the bracket. In fact, it's all one piece. As such, this pulley does not mount on there very well. Even with that bolt tight, the pulley still walks. And what that does is it probably uh, creates more stress on this mount. It also prematurely wears the pulley. It starts making noise. It sounds a lot like, uh, it's a whining sound. It sounds like a bad power steering pump, which is what mine was doing. So a little backstory on my truck and how I arrived in this situation. Before I bought the truck, apparently the compressor clutch had locked up, and back then the parts weren't so cheap. These kits were quite a bit cheaper than a compressor clutch kit or, and, of course, a new compressor. So they opted for the delete kit. Now, I drove the truck about 5,000 miles before it started making these horrendous whining sounds and uh, lots of noises. And uh, I actually drove it a lot longer than that with it making noise before I did some diagno diagnostics and determined what the problem was. My mount, this cast aluminum cheesy piece, had cracked and it was about to snap off. That and the pulley had significant wear on it and that's what was causing my noise. So, at that point, I had already determined that I was going to fix the air conditioner at some point just not right now. So in the meantime, to get the truck back on the road, I opted for another kit. And I went with the $30 one because again, I couldn't tell any difference between it and the $80 one. So it comes in and of course, the pulley's too small. So I had to use the new bracket and reuse my old pulley. And of course, that didn't solve the noise. So I decided to source a used compressor in the meantime, uh, that has a good clutch and pulley on it. And that's what we just did. So, you know, should you get one, uh, you know, it's up to you. There's really no wrong answer. You know, you might be building an engine uh, in a hot rod that doesn't even have air conditioning and you want to run the factory belt, you can use one of these kits. Or, you may be looking for a temporary solution like I was. Uh, I, in that case, I would recommend sourcing an a old compressor that's got a good pulley on it. Uh, I generally, I guess I'd say I do not recommend these kits. Uh, they're cheesy, unless maybe the $80 one is higher quality and it has better fitment. If that's the case, you know, these are fine. But, like I said, I couldn't tell any difference between the $80 one and the $30 one. I think they're all the same, and I do not recommend these if you have other options. So, uh, I hope this has been helpful. I hope I brought enough information here for you to use when you go to make the decision of whether or not to go this route when you're fixing your truck. And uh, so now I'm ready for the next phase of my little project. So. Oh, for Pete's sake, where's my 10 millimeter? Oh, 
Oh, jeez. Mm.